We're racing at uh, Monza and um, uh, Von Trips had a big accident and uh, Jim Clark actually was blown for it and because uh, uh, Jimmy and um, Von Trips hit together and Von Trips went off and killed some people in the, uh, in the spectators and uh, um, because Colin Chapman came to me and he said, because in Italy when there's been an accident and people get killed, they, they, um, they, they lock you up until they investigate what happened. And of course, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to go back to England. And um, so Colin Chapman asked me if I'd take Jimmy back in my aeroplane. Uh, and uh, so we had to smuggle him into the uh, Castles area and through the uh, Castles, lucky nobody recognised him. And uh, took him out to my aeroplane and put him in the back and flew him back to England. So uh, we managed to get out of that and uh, well, that was um, uh, a thing that could have been very bad from the point of view of um, being stuck in Italy for a couple of days. Uh, while I investigated the accident. So we managed to get out of that. Did you put a disguise on him at all to get through custom? Mm -hmm. Did you disguise him at all to get through custom? No, no, what happened? Um, um, I, I went down and did, we just went through custom saying we were going to refill the aeroplane. So we went through the custom saying we were just going out to refill the aeroplane. But when we went out to refill the aeroplane, we left Jimmy Clark in the in the aeroplane, and we all came back and went through customs and left him in the aeroplane. So well, we took off them and we flew him back to England. And he was subsequently cleared of of the yeah. blame. Yeah, that. yeah. He eventually got out of trouble. Yeah. Actually, uh, I went to a race in Sweden at Carl's Cargo and uh, um, I had a little airfield just nearby and uh, unfortunately somebody milked one of the tanks on the, uh, on the aeroplane and uh, when we took off we were flying across a lake, we had the engine stop. And I had to uh, change tanks and get us. Luckily, we had fuel in another tank. And uh, we got to um, uh, Gothenburg uh, without any problem. That, but it was just that moment where you, this fuel had to switch from one tank to the other. That yeah, happen. yeah, that was pretty exciting. And uh, when the thing runs out of fuel, of course, it gets your attention. And <laughs> we got down and got the fuel uh, cups fixed up and uh, got the engine running again. It was a relief to hear the engine run again. What sort of plane was it? Um, I had a Cessna 310. Yeah, well that was in a different aeroplane of course. Uh, that was a uh, Queen Air and uh, what I was doing, I sold it to uh, Bib Stillwell in England, in Australia, and I was delivering it to him. And uh, so we put ferry, ferry tanks in the aeroplane so we didn't have to stop at all these uh, terrible places that were difficult to go through customs and everywhere. So we bypassed a lot of them by putting extra fuel in the aeroplane. But unfortunately, going out, don't cast the uh, in, in the, the biggest uh, uh, stage of the, uh, of the trip it was a 2,000 mile trip from Mizera, which is a little island off Saudi Arabia, uh, to um, Colombo. And uh, that was a 2,000 mile stage. And halfway across, uh, we run out of fuel on one of the fuel tanks as well. Again, they had both engines stopped. 
never mind about one where both engines stopped. And uh, we're at 14,000 feet. And uh, that, uh, of course, we got the uh, fuel coxal changed over again, I think. And by the time we got the two engines running again, we're at 7,000 feet. We lost 7,000 feet with getting the engines running again. And we were 2,000 miles from land at the time. So that was pretty exciting. You must have thought that that was as close as you're going to get. <laughs> well, it certainly got our attention. Actually, I got myself in a big trouble with the Cessna 310. Um, I, I, I went down to Wales in it to visit the people who were making the brakes at the time uh, for the Coopers. And uh, I, um, I unfortunately went out to a long lunch and it was late getting back to the aeroplane. And when I took off, uh, it was coming back to uh, Fair Oaks. Of uh, course, on the way back, the, uh, the fog set in. And in those days, the fogs were pretty bad. And uh, the, uh, the uh, Fair Oaks, of course, I had no hope of getting into Fair Oaks, so I decided to go to Luton. And um, because Luton was an aerodrome I used a lot, and they had radar and everything there. Anyway, um, on my way to Luton, they uh, called me up and said, unfortunately, we've got to close the aerodrome. It's, uh, the fog's too bad, so you can't land here. So, uh, so I said, well, again, okay, where can I go? And they said, well, Bovington is, is open at the moment, so I headed for Bovington. And before I got there, they closed that one as well. And uh, so I was stuck there where the, all the aerodromes around the place were closed with fog. So I uh, had no option but to go back to Luton because of the radar, and I knew the radar people there. And um, they, um, uh, decided, okay, they'd, they'd, they'd try and get me in. And uh, i uh, come across the fence at only 50 feet and couldn't see a thing. And uh, all I could do was just let the aeroplane settle. When the radar people confirmed I was uh, uh, on, on over the runway, and I just let it settle onto the ground and couldn't see a thing. And then when I stopped, I eventually got stopped, uh, now I had to wait for him to come down with a vehicle to show me the way back because we couldn't find our way back to the terminal. Uh, I was very lucky that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of our stupid things we'd done really. Um, we had an ultralight aeroplane which um, uh, we had on the farm and uh, anyway I took off in it and it had a problem with the uh, with, with the wing in fact and I got a shudder a shudder in the wing and uh, I decided I didn't want to be up there anymore and I turned, turned right and landed in a wheat field and when I landed in the wheat field the wheels hooked in the wheat and turn the aeroplane upside down. <laughs> so I finished up hanging the seatbelt upside down and Gary and uh, uh, the, the our farm hand had to come and get me out. In 1970 when I uh, won the Grand Prix in South Africa, we spent a bit of time in Winter Kruger Park and Jeffrey and uh, Bruce McLaren and um, um, Denny Holm were with us and uh, we went out to this Kruger Park which was uh, very exciting and uh, we were told specifically never to get out of the motor car uh, because it was too dangerous and uh, anyway yeah, um, Denny had a movie camera and he was filming the monkeys on the side of the track. And uh, he, he was filming them and Bruce McLaren uh, 
um, had a, uh, a packet of biscuits in his hand. And we had a baboon got up on the bonnet and was looking through the window and he could see the biscuits and he could see the window was down and he jumped off the side, come round and came in the window, pushed Danny to one side and went over and grabbed the biscuits <laughs> and took off. <laughs> and uh, lucky he got the biscuits because if he hadn't, uh, I don't know what he'd have done because we wouldn't have been able to cope with it. He'd, uh, and uh, he, I think he would have got hurt pretty badly if he hadn't got out. <laughs>